Hi everybody, Eric the Car Guy here. Now, recently I was editing the full length version of the uh, Integra timing belt video and noticed that I had a valve adjustment video hidden down inside. So I decided to cut that out and present that here to you free of charge. Uh, for those of you that have asked me about doing a valve adjustment on this particular engine, this is a 1.8 liter non-VTEC engine. VTEC's a little different, it's got a little cam retainer that runs across the top, but it's similar. Uh, in the way you perform everything as far as this valve adjustment goes. Valve adjustments are something you need to practice. Something, it's a developed skill. It's not something that you're gonna pick up right off the bat. So you may have to run through these a couple of times to, to make sure that, that you have it done correctly. Um, either the engine may not idle correctly or you may hear a lot of noise. If you hear noise, you got it too loose. If it's not idling correctly, you may have them too tight. And I can tell you right now, You'd rather hear them than smell them, as we say. So in other words, you'd rather go loose than go tight. So don't try to make it so tight you can barely pull the feeler gauge out. Try to make it so that you've got like just a slight amount of drag. And once again, that's a skill that's gonna take time. This engine, it's actually easier to do the valve adjustment than on a lot of them. Um, I'm gonna use some special tools in here, but I also show you how to use it, how to do the adjustment without the special tools. Uh, if you do this a lot, highly recommend those tools. Instead of me talking, why don't we just get right down to the video. No better time to adjust the valves, right here. And I prefer to adjust them before I do the timing belt. That way if I get any oil or anything like that on the timing belt, I'm not worried about it because it's the old timing belt. I'm gonna to toss it anyway. So actually, I'm gonna run through the valves on this real quick. Wanna watch? Valves on this car are either 0 0.004 inches or 0 0.102 millimeters. And for the intake valves and for the exhaust valves, it's 0 0.007. Uh, inches or point point one seventy eight millimeters. So I call these my 10 and 18s because I like to think in metrics. The world is going to metrics eventually. I use a 19 millimeter wrench on the power steering pump pulley. When you see me turning the engine over, I use this 19 millimeter wrench on this power steering pulley to turn me over. Works just fine. And it's better than bending over down to that crank pulley down there where the spark plugs out works just fine personally i like to make sure that i'm absolutely certain i'm on the base circle of these what i mean when i say that is that this is your cam lobe and this is your rocker arm and you're actually going to take the feeler gauge and put it in here like this in between these two and this is wicked loose but uh i like to make sure that that cam lobe is directly opposite where I'm gonna be sticking the feeler gauge into. Real simple to do, it takes a minute. I mean, you can be anywhere on this, what's considered the base circle, and this is the lobe. So long as you're not on the lobe, and the valve is loose when you adjust it, that's how to adjust it. I have a special tool for doing this valve adjustment. Um, this tool is available, I believe this is from Blue Point. There's its number. You can just as easily use a flathead screwdriver and a 12 millimeter wrench to do the exact same thing. Now that you have your valves all ready to be adjusted, be sure to have the correct size feeler gauge, in this case they're intakes. If you're using the screwdriver slash wrench method, you can put the wrench on like that, hold it still, knock it loose, and just uh, I do this a couple of times until I feel it bottom out. And then I sort of turn the screwdriver back in the opposite direction just a little bit so that I can counteract the force of turning the wrench in that same direction, in the opposite direction. I'm looking for just a little bit of drag in there. See how it's just ever so much resistance as I pull it out? That is a properly adjusted valve, right there. A little bit of drag, see how it's grabbing? Go to the next. Once again, it's the same size, so I'm just gonna slip the gauge in there and I can see that it's way loose. I'm gonna put my wrench on, put my screwdriver on. Crack it loose. And then I'm just 
I just spin the screw until I feel it. It's got just, until it just bottoms out. Then I'm going to try to hold the screw in place and tighten it up. Uh, it's still a little bit loose. Didn't quite get it on that one. It's very close though. Hold it in place. And whenever you're pushing with your wrench, try to push with an open hand. If not, you can bust your knuckles on this valve train. It'll leave some nasty wounds if you're not careful. Perfect. Now let's run through the rest. Except for that, I'm going to use my tool. And I just keep turning it in engine rotation and you'll see that this exhaust valve will be the next ones to come up. I hope you've enjoyed this little outtake of the Integra valve adjustment video and I hope that it was helpful to you and gave you some useful information and perhaps saved you some money. Uh, I must reiterate again that valve adjustments are an acquired skill and will not necessarily uh, cure a performance issue. It may make your engine run smoother but don't look for it to like cure some lack of power or what have you because uh, valve adjustments are a fine tuning uh, thing. They're not, they're not necessarily a fix. If, if valves are really, really loose, then yes, it can be a fix, but it's not often that you run into that because it's not often that they get that loose. They'll wear over time, that kind of thing. At the dealership, we were doing these things about every 30,000 miles. Actually, we were doing them 15,000 miles for a while, um, but uh, that since got backed off all the way from Honda until it's just when it was noisy. So it's really up to you when and how you want to do this. But once again, it's a fine-tuning exercise. It is not something that's going to that's going to cure some issue for you. Um, if you're having performance issues, I've got other videos on trying to nail down a performance issue. But what I find is when I get done doing a timing belt and a valve adjustment on these engines, they run very smoothly and they have a nice power delivery. So if you're uh, in there and you got the valve cover off and you're doing a timing uh, uh, timing belt, there's no better time to to you know, bust out those feeler gauges and do that valve adjustment. Anyway, I am Eric the Car Guy. You can always visit me at ericthecarguy.com or you can find me on Facebook and Twitter. And around here we close with be safe, have fun, and of course, stay dirty. See you.